Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Welcome to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and my company is called Eros Coaching. That's E-R-O-S coaching.com. I have a doctorate in human sexuality, and what I do is I work with individuals and couples who have sexual challenges, questions, issues, and I also run sexuality-related events in Singapore and Asia and beyond, hopefully, in more time to come. And today I have two guests, they're a couple, and this is the second time that I bring on to the show a couple, and I'm very excited about it. It's very different when I'm just speaking with one person, and two, there's more of a dynamics and rapport that uh, goes on during the show. And so this show title is called Designer Relationships, Sharing Tools to Create and Nurture the Relationship You Desire. And we have Mark Michaels and Patricia Johnson. They are multi-award winning authors of Partners in Passion and Great Sex Made Simple. They suggest that contemporary relationships are in a state of rapid evolution. These changes can and should empower people, providing the opportunity to develop partnerships based on their own circumstances, sexualities, understandings, and agreements. So in their new book, and today's show title in this show, we'll be talking about designer relationships, where they will be offering a new paradigm that emphasizes mutual, mutual, mutuality, a collaborative mindset, empathy, and transparency. They invite us to think outside the open, closed, monogamous, non-monogamous box. Surely there are more forms that we can understand in today's show. So designer relationships is also about how to have lots of how-to suggestions and exercises. According to Patricia and Mark, designer relationships can encompass people who bond emotionally but not sexually, people who agree to be non-exclusive, happily single people who have occasional lovers or friends with benefits, multiple partner configurations where long-term bonds exist among all or some, partnerships in which people are kinky and that make room to explore kink amongst many others. Designer Relationship provides you with the tools to recognize and then craft a way of loving that works for you. Lots to think about. <laughs> so let me introduce a little bit more about our guests, Mark Michaels and Patricia Johnson. They are a devoted married couple. They have been creative collaborators, teaching and writing about relationships, sexuality and tantra together since 1999. Internationally known and widely quoted as experts, Michaels and Johnson are the authors of a few books, Designer Relationships, Passion, Partners in Passion, as well as Great Sex Makes Possible, and also Tantra for Erotic Empowerment and The Essence of Tantric Sexuality. So their books have, their books have garnered multiple awards, and we'll find out more about them as we continue with the show. So without further ado, welcome. Hi. Hi, thanks for having us on. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you guys making the time. I know it's probably twice as challenging when two people, uh, you know, the logistics, we need to make sure that happens. And uh, I understand that you guys just launched this book. Tell us more about it. Okay. Well, actually, we're kind of right at the very beginning of launching it. The official publication date is the 15th. Ah. Uh, it is It is up on Amazon and Barnes & Noble now, and it's starting to trickle into bookstores as well. Yep. So we're really ahead of the uh, the wave, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like to be, I like to get in early so that people know about it and, you know, they get to hear about this first. So I remember like months ago, I already received a, a copy of your book and I already did a review of it. And uh, people can find it by Googling um, designer relationships, 
review Arrows Coaching, you'll be able to find my book review. So tell us, what is a designer relationship? Hmm. Yeah. It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I think maybe it'd be better to talk about what designer relationships are not. Mm, okay. And our main criticism is any relationship that's unexamined. So um, people who fall into relationship styles that are by default in which they've never really had conversations about what and why they're with their partner or partners and what the purpose is. It's, um, and that usually, um, it, it usually takes the form of being a monogamous relationship, uh, what people sometimes call mandatory or, or what we call reflexive or unexamined monogamy. Mm. So, I, I mean, I can speak for myself in, in the past. I, uh, I've been in relationships where the assumption is that we're going to be monogamous, but we haven't really defined what that is. And we haven't made clear agreements about what that will look like for us. And we're in such a, a shifting culture uh, worldwide about what defines sex, what is sexual activity, um, what defines fidelity, and also um, what defines, uh, you know, the grape areas in between those two. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you begin to talk, uh, I, be, I, I'm starting to think about what's been happening, breaking around the news, which is, uh, with Ashley Madison, the leak of their customer database. And now the fallout of it is really starting to happen with the reports. And, uh, these people, are uh, we consider cheating. However, some of them are, really in open relationships where their partner knows about it. So I think this falls right into our topic of designer relationships today. Oh, absolutely. And I, I mean, I think the, the thing with the Ashley Madison uh, scandal or affair, whatever you want to call it, yeah. um, you know, that that's really, really sad. And I, it's it's been mm. a huge thing in the States mm. is that, very few of the of the people, and of course there are women on the site too, but the overwhelming majority of them are men, and, and this has mostly been directed at men. Mm -hmm. Very, very few of the men on the site are actually having affairs. Uh, the, the, the ratio of men to women is, is astronomically high in favor of men, and there's been uh, there's been media, uh, Gawker did some, or not Gawker, Gizmodo did some uh, coverage on how many bots female bots there are on on uh, on the site so for your listeners a, a bot is yeah. an automatic reply it's an actual it's just a computer that analyzes an email that comes in and then fashions some sort of reply that makes it seem like the individual is in a conversation with a real person and it works in chat as well as an email so 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 uh, a lot of these individuals were just having conversations with a, a computer system and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting into this realm with the Ashley Madison is the, the of overwhelming, seemingly majority of these people were just in, engaging in thought, uh, thoughts and, and just fantasies, fantasies. and not really, uh, would they really be cheating if they're just having a little conversation with somebody, um, especially a computer, a computer, <laughs> But that, that is up to every individual in that relationship. And if they haven't had that conversation with their partner, then, um, you know, they could very well be violating some sort of, well, <laughs> unspoken relationship agreement. We just encourage people to really be clear about what, where their boundaries are. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I do hear this in my private practice where people say things like, oh, she won't understand or he won't understand. Uh, I can't bring this up. I don't think she can take it. Uh, this is not in his or her personality, um, you know, and they kind of like almost like carry this big burden on their shoulders that makes them look and feel really heavy. However, it's it's not necessary uh, to do that, you know, there's a lot of like assumptions that's really happening. I think right. that's, that's why there's a lot of fear around broaching such subjects, you know? Yes. And I, I really, oh, geez, you know, some cases that might, might very well be true that the partner could not 
does has no interest in having a conversation about this or about uh, these things or, but I think if you haven't asked your partner, then you're, um, I don't, I'm not so trustworthy that they're telling the truth that their partner isn't interested. I think it just takes a lot of courage to have these conversations and perhaps people are not having them when they should. What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that I think a big word when it comes to being honest with your partner is integrity. It's very, very important to really just be honest and vulnerable with, with your partner. And I think that's a big basis of the premise of having healthy relationships, whatever form that is. Yeah, I think honesty is very important, although I, I'm going to say something that may be a little controversial here. And I think uh, this is a very much of an American. Uh, uh, getting some feedback. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Very much of an American phenomenon, which is that in in the states, there's an idea that cheating is the worst possible thing. That polling data really shows that it's probably the most reviled behavior in the entire, you know, spectrum of things that people disapprove of. Mm. Uh, you know, cl human cloning is is more acceptable than cheating into the American public. Mm. Uh, I know we're heading toward a break, so we c I can pick up on that in a moment. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. So we are with Mark Michaels and Patricia Johnson, and we're talking about designer relationships. And so far, what we've talked about is what it is not. It is not about making assumptions. It's having clear agree agreements. And we are acknowledging that there is a shifting culture of what sex and fidelity is being defined. And uh, Michael uh, brought up a very, very good point about how we see cheating as one of the worst things that can happen when, you know, it's kind of, you know, a lot of hype around it. So let's continue this discussion after the break. What is it? The sound. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Imagine receiving healing, vibration raising energy as you listen to the radio. Energy that flows effortlessly to you. Imagine exploring all things metaphysical, sharing in an ongoing adventure. Join me, Karen Smoot, along with my co hosts, Lisa Victorson and Wendy Weber, for Immersion into Source. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Home Radio. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros Evolution. You are listening to Eros Evolution on the Home Times Radio Network. You can share this show with your friends right now by sending them the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to our show without needing to download any applications. And as you know, some applications are not compatible with Androids and so on. And so it just makes it much simpler. And that's what we do at 
Home Times Radio. We make life simpler for you. And I hope you learn lots. Uh, in today's show, we have Mark Michaels and Patricia Johnson. They are uh, a couple who have spent their entire life exploring simple solutions and perspective to help you discover the fulfilling potential in all your relationships. And you can find out more about their work by going to Michaels with an S, Michaels and Johnson. Dot com, And you'll find out more about all the other work and books that they've published. It's quite an impressive list. As I mentioned earlier in the show, they are award-winning. And some of their books have received numerous awards such as Independent Publishing, Forward Reviews, Indie, Fab, and US Book News Best Books, among other awards that they have. So be sure to check out their website, Michaels and Johnson's. Johnson.com. So welcome back to the show, Michael and Johnson. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, when, whenever I come across your, uh, whenever I read your name, I always think of the famous Michael and Johnson, right? Like, you know, <laughs> the, the sex researchers, researchers you know. Um, Master will be Johnson, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Masters and Johnsons, <laughs> yeah. I, I always think of them. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's kind of funny for me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, so uh, yes, yeah, just to kind of pick up on where we left before the break, what I wanted to finish that thought by saying when we were cutting right up on the break is that sometimes um, not telling a partner about an infidelity may be really the ethical thing to do. I don't think that's something that gets addressed widely enough, but there are situations where maybe that's really the best choice for you. If, you, if you're in a relationship where you're very emotionally bonded, um, but this, there's no sex for whatever reason. Uh, it it may be more uh, more ethical not to leave the relationship, not to hurt the partner, and to take care of whatever sexual needs you have outside. There's um, something we like to encourage people to distinguish between, and that's the concept of private and secret and how those relate to your sexuality, both as a couple or as a single person or in um, a multiple uh, relationship. And just because you're in a partnership doesn't mean that your entire sexual life suddenly has to be confessed and reported to your significant other, it, I think, is helpful and prudent to keep certain aspects of your, your sexual self private to yourself. That's a, a, a very self-loving thing to have, a rich sex life with yourself. And I think sometimes people think, feel that, that you can't have any separate sexual self once you've in a, you're in a committed relationship. Yeah, we've certainly encountered people who think that fantasizing about somebody else or, or masturbating is the same as cheating. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's a sort of a, a very very murky area as to what you know what mon monogamy is, and that's one of the things that we we try to address in the book, and we try to break it into a few different components um, and, and encourage people to define it for themselves. Because the, the fact is, is that you, you come to a relationship, but you have this whole rich sexual history um, before coming to that relationship. And it, it's very unrealistic to expect certain aspects of your sexual self to just turn off because you have a partner. So in the realm of the Ashley Madison uh you know, affair as Mark likes to re re refer to it, is, is that many of those people may have just been engaging in simple fantasy and a private sexual fantasy within themselves, but it had, it had nothing to do with their relationship or their partner, how much they love their partner. It was just a, a private, private way of, of just enjoying themselves. Yeah. And yeah. Whatever they, Whatever they wasn't hurting, wasn't hurting their partner, partner. No. the quality, the quality of, their relationship. of their relationship. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that often this idea that there's some infidelity, if there's not, there's not a clear agreement, it's sort of, you know, it's a no-win proposition, right? <laughs> because you never know what, what rule you're breaking. I mean, there may be an element in, in a lot of these cases of, of some dissatisfaction or or some kind of uh, um, disloyalty to a partner, but that's a far cry from really being unfaithful to them. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really appreciating some of the points that you guys are mentioning because I thought I knew a lot about relationships and a lot of the things that we're talking about. However, even this thing about what is ethical, what is integrity is uh, now being discussed, you know, and I really appreciate being able to expand my understanding uh, even even now. Uh, it goes to show that you guys have really thought through all the different facets of this. We're, we're still expanding our mind <laughs> and understanding integrity. I think that's a lifelong quest, right? <laughs> yeah, so maybe just for listeners, I'm just, uh, you know, wanting to point out because the term designer relationships is really quite a new term. So how did this term come about? That's that's a great question, and I'm glad you, you brought us back to that. Um, the term was coined by a man named Ken Haslam, who was really one of the leaders of the early polyamory movement and, and continues to, to this day, he's in his 80s, to be very active in the, in the poly movement in the States. He uh, founded the Kinsey Institute's Polyamory Archive. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And he coined the term because he really was somewhat uncomfortable with the way that, that various alternative movements in the States were getting fragmented. So you had or factionalized. So you had, you know, polyamorous movements saying, we're not like those swingers. We had the swingers saying, we're not like those poly people. You had, you know, all, all these different little factions. And Ken's idea was really create your own. So the designer in designer relationships is not some external designer. It's you and mm -hmm. the, the people you're interacting with. So in the book, Designer Relationships, we've outlined questions and, and series of steps and ways to start these conversations so that people can start designing their own relationships and really landing on what works for them and is most fulfilling because, I, wow, I can honestly say there are no two relationships that are exactly alike. And relationships change, you know, I mean, We've been together for uh, going on 16 years. No, over 16 years. We're going on 15, 15th anniversary is coming up in a couple of months. Um, yeah, and our relationship has been through ebbs and flows and different, you know, different ways of being together and di different degrees of openness and, and monogamy. And I think that's, that's kind of natural. And, and, the, and the thing is that a lot of people think, well, you know, we move in together or we get married and we've signed a contract and maybe we haven't even talked about the terms of that contract, mm -hmm. but everything it's, it's like the American, you know, the, the Disney fairy tale, they lived happily ever after. And that's mm -hmm. the end of the story. Mm -hmm. And it's just not like that. It's yeah. the beginning. <laughs> Precisely. And a lot of people seem to think that just because they have this big uh, spark and amazing connection in the beginning of the relationship is just going to last through the entire relationship and they don't need to put in any effort or um and it's just going to be fine it's it's uh it's, it's just not, doesn't work that way no i think i think all sparks will will uh fade away unless uh, people learn how to tend to that passion and nurture it and really keep it in the fore it's it's a skill set and a process it's it's not something you're you do once and for all and you're done with it <laughs> it's also not you know and we we talk about this a lot more in partners and passion our our previous book which is more more oriented toward couples it's not a matter of working on your relationship. You know, we, we, we kind of have this thing like everything's gone to hell. So now we've got to work on the relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you tend to the relationship all the time. I like the word tend to. I like the word tend to because work really, you know, uh, conjures up this whole thing that makes us feel tired, even, you know, as we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And um, we, there was a recent study um, that came out and they surveyed people and the second worst thing they like to do in life or experience in life is work. And the first is to be sick. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're relating, if you're thinking of your relationship as work, what kind of message are you sending yeah. each other? Yeah. So, I, yeah, I agree, you know, because as um people who work with people, uh, coaches, we have to be very mindful of the words that we use. So finally, I think for the first time, I, I like this word tend to uh, instead of work. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like a garden, right? You, you reap these beautiful flowers, and it's such a joy to tend to a beautiful flower. So Another, another word that we like, and it, we think of this as kind of central to the idea of, of a designer relationship, mm-hmm. is collaboration. And although, you know, the, the Latin root of, of its labor is in there, but when you think of collaboration, you think of like art, you think of a shared project, something that, that you're – creating together and so we like that word as well yeah so have a relationship be a work of art a co-created work of art by you know continuing to nurture it that's our big message (laughs) little nuggets that you're sharing with me i feel like i'm uh having you know like a private lesson <laughs> even though i know we are you know uh, lots of people listening in and uh, benefiting from it some people feel so uncomfortable even just thinking that it's possible to have a relationship that is not monogamous um, there's a lot of fear i imagine anxiety and People who are conscious about it, who are willing to talk about it, are just much more real and brave, in in my opinion. And um, they're more likely to have a successful relationship. I think you're right. I mean, there there are studies that at this point suggest that um, people who are in consensually non-monogamous relationships are more satisfied than the general public. Now, these are studies. I, I think there may be a study from the UK. They're mostly from the States, though. Um, but but there's a good deal of evidence for that. Mm. Great. Yeah, so we're coming up for a break again. And I'll just quickly summarize what I've learned. I've learned that we can use the word tend to a relationship instead of work on your relationship, which conjures up, um, you know, messages that are not really that positive for us. And uh, then... Uh, Patricia talked about normal conformity and I think this is the whole basis of designer relationships. So more after this break. The future of internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. Greetings, fellow soul travelers. This is Dr. Amelia Kemp with Ohm Times Radio. If you've been stressed mentally or emotionally, then join me on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the From Psychotherapy to Sacred Therapy show, where you'll learn you're not sick, you're sacred, and by aligning with the soul is what makes you whole. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Yeah. Welcome mm-hmm. back to Arrow's Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. We are with Mark Michaels and Patricia Johnson. You can find them on their website. That's michaelsandjohnson.com. They are award-winning 
published authors of multiple books. And today in, on the show, we're talking about designer relationships. So welcome back to the show. So just to pick up on what, where we were discussing, how would you define uh, monogamy? monogamy? <laughs> we, we love asking this question. And I want to just take a couple of moments and let your, your listeners sort of think it through. So they're kind of thinking of your their definition and... And one of the things that we actually ask people to do as an exercise in the book is to define monogamy for themselves. But what we do is we break it down into four components. One is sexual monogamy. Now that has to be defined because that can mean different things to different people. One, another is emotional monogamy. Same thing. You really need to define what that means to you. The next one is social monogamy. That's a little bit more complicated, but that really involves how you are socially. Do you, you know, are, if you're a couple, do you really enjoy spending most of your time together or do you like to go off separately and do stuff? And finally, there's practical monogamy and that's really your living arrangements. And practical monogamy historically would have been a couple that got married to and, and ran a mill together or the inn or had a shared project. They you know, till the land. And, and it was more like a, a business relationship that was in the fore rather than emotional and sexual and social. So that's, it's got a historic context. Mm. So, so I have a question. What about long distance relationships? Would they be under practical monogamy? Cause for whatever reason, they can't be together physically in the same place. Well, you still might have a practically monogamous relationship if it were a long distance one, um, if you're sort of pooling your financial resources, if you're, if you're, you know, living, even if you're living apart, you may still have a lot of the elements of practical monogamy attached to it. Um, but that can vary, you know, if, if it's just a long distance relationship and you're not having a house together, et cetera, your, your finances are all separate, then you're not really in a practically monogamous, you're practically single. You know, <laughs> yeah. But when you, work. yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it can work. And I, I, you know, people, this is something, I don't want to get too far off of the monogamy conversation, but something that I think is undervalued is for individuals who choose to live their life as a single person, but they all, may have different kinds of love experiences or sexual experiences outside of how they lead their life. And I think that is very valuable in a, in a wonderful way of having a life. Right. So single by choice is another type of designer relationship. We don't, we don't say designer relationships have to involve more than one person. <laughs> so yeah. um, if, you're, if you're choosing to be single, you're, you're in, you've designed a relationship for yourself. Mm. Yeah. And it's just whatever works for people. However, there's just so much societal and I think cultural pressure. And, um, you know, do these people suffer from dissatisfaction, you think? Well, there's enormous stigma attached to anything that, that is perceived as being deviant. I mean, you know, and this comes from religion. It comes from a lot of the psychological uh, profession and establishment, you know, that still buys into the Freudian idea that, that being in a, in a monogamous couple is the, the ultimate is, and, and it's the only mature form of relating, mm. you know, so we get it from religion. We get it from the therapeutic community. We get it from the culture at large, which says, you know, if you like to have casual sex, you're incapable of intimacy. You have a problem. Uh, if you're a woman, you're a slut. You know, there's all this still very, very negative uh, cultural messaging that that's attached to anything that's different. But um, along the lines that Mark brought up, uh, casual sex, some of the studies are showing that people who enjoy that actually experience a uh, heightened self-esteem, a better sense of uh, happiness. And that, that's underreported. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, there are some people that have casual sex and regret it by all means, but they're, they're not the only ones. There are plenty of people that have it and absolutely love the experience. Yeah. Yeah. There are positive uh, things that come from having casual sex, such as uh, this sense of liberation, you know. Once you embrace your shadow side of being the bad girl or bad boy and you just let go of that, you actually feel much more freedom. 
I think also a lot of times, um, and and it's been my experience with with some casual sex that I've had that the feeling of being desired, the mm. feeling that that someone is really really hot for you, and there's no strings attached to that, is very very empowering. Mm. And I, you know, it's interesting. I mean that some of the research on the swing community suggests that that women in that community feel even more empowered than the men. And I think that that really being appreciated and desired is something that we all want, regardless of, of gender or where we are on the gender spectrum. And so casual sex can be a wonderful way to have that kind of sense of being really hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, once you've had that experience, you actually become literally a different person. So you actually bring something back uh, to yourself or, or to your relationship with your partner. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's thrilling to have your partner be confident and feel great and, you know, just happy. I, I really thrive on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's this question that I have. Do people in alternate alternative relationships suffer greater that dissatisfaction you think? Um, uh, no, I think the, the research suggests that across the board, they, they are more satisfied in their relationships. Mm -hmm. And that, that applies also in, in the realm of kink, where there's, where there's research suggesting that people who's, uh, who do kinky scenes that don't go well, still feel, still have reduced stress hormones after the scene may feel more bonded, even if it hasn't gone very well. So the, the indications are that, that people who are in consensually non-monogamous or alternative relationships are, are more satisfied. There is another side to it, which is, and this was a study done with college students, as is so often the case, but the, the students who were in open relationships were presented with descriptions of two couples that were otherwise identical but one was described as being monogamous and the other was described as being non-monogamous. Mm -hmm. And they, the students evaluated the non-monogamous relationships as less, uh, as less, uh, less happy and less fulfilled. Even when they were non-monogamous themselves. So there's this internalization of, of the uh, stigma. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so we're all about destigmatizing this and, <laughs> and encouraging people to really follow their hearts and feel uh, feel good and at peace with themselves for doing what what's right for them. Now, Mark Mark touched on a very interesting thing, and that's that when things don't go well, couples often feel uh, become more bonded. It, especially in the kink kink community, but what studies are telling or showing is that. Uh, conflict is actually beneficial for bonding. Conflict that doesn't break your relationship apart, but conflict that does present a challenge and one that you both work through or everyone works through deepens your sense of connection. And those relationships tend to be stronger than the relationships that profess to be conflict-free. And this is one of the things where, uh, you know, the, we're, we're quite skeptical of internet dating um, as as a way of finding a, a good match, because what the dating algorithms really do is they tell you, uh, you know, is does this person have a lot in common with me? And that's important. But the more important thing is, do you have compatible enough conflict resolution styles? So, Right. If you one of you resolves uh, conflict by storming out the door and walking around the block until you cool down and the other one of you needs to like sit face to face and talk it out until four in the morning, mm -hmm. both of you guys, you're just not going to work well together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Opposites attract. So lots of lots of my clients um, do that, you know, and then they feel that uh, the other person is wrong because they need to resolve conflict in a different way. Yes, isn't that amazing? And there's no, there's no right way to resolve conflict. The only right way is that you reach resolution. You know, I mean, barring violence, but I mean, there's so many ways, and no one has the right way. It's just 
get to the resolution as quickly as possible. <laughs> and we have very different conflict management styles. But the 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 thing is that we're aware of those. We we talk about them. We we find alternatives. We try to meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you know, no two people are going to have identical conflict resolution styles. So it is something that you've got to you know pay attention to and mm -hmm. and. Um, create together and, and it, it's something that really evolved. I, I really like the piece that you guys shared about conflict and how it helps a couple become more bonded together. I think ultimately, regardless of the kind of relationships that they are in, it's a matter of choice, you know, whether they want to stay with the person or persons or not. And when there's conflict, it, it becomes more real. And being able to resolve it well helps them to actually respect their partner more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing more deadening than uh, things shutting down because there's some, you know, some conflict that can't be resolved and then people just mm -hmm. backing away from each other. And I like your, um, uh, oh, geez, respect for one another. And when you have respect by, you know, seeing, seeing that you both have, you know, resolve this, it also builds goodwill and it also builds trust. And those three things are so important in a relationship. Mm. Yeah, you know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm Asian. So a lot of times we just avoid conflict. And here we are having a different perspective about conflict today on this show. We're talking about how conflict and being able to resolve it is really important uh, rather than skirt around it or sweep it under the carpet. It helps with uh, being able to trust, respect, have uh, goodwill with your partner and become more emotionally bonded uh, with your partner or partners. So this is this is a big piece because I, I think uh, for us Asians, we are just taught from young, um, you know, to shut up and just be quiet and avoid conflict. And then when we grow up, we wonder why our relationships are not really that happy. And it's an it's a issue. So we are with Michaels and Patricia Johnson and we'll be back after this break. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together, We'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM.
Welcome back. We are into the last fifteen minutes of our show, and I wanted you to know that our guests, Michaels and Johnson, they are very generous in offering a free CD set with free shipping within US only when you mention the show Arrows Evolution. So what you can do is email them through their website, Michaels and Johnson. Com. You may also wish to follow them on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, you can look for them under Partners in Passion Guide and on Twitter, Tantra PM. So be sure to get uh, if you know this free CD set. It's very generous of them to offer this. This is the first time um, we're getting somebody offering a CD set with free shipping within US. So be sure to drop them an email. Let them know you heard about this uh, offer on this show and um, um, learn from them, you know, because they are award-winning authors and they've just published a new book called Designer Relationships. You definitely want to check it out. So, uh, welcome back to the show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, uh, because the show is always exploring the link between uh, sexuality and spirituality, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to comment on, on that? Yeah, I, I well... The first thing I want to say is that I think there's a perception among a lot of people that these two things are separate. And that's really kind of a cultural overlay. If you look at human history, kind of the earliest roots of religion and spirituality are entwined with sex. And our background is in, in Tantra. Um, and of course, that's a tradition that has, you know, a, a sacred sexual component to it. And so we think the the thing is that the separation of sex and spirit is really the illusion that we're we're contending with in this society. So um, another way of thinking of it is whenever you're sexually aroused, you're in an altered state of consciousness. And how we see it is that altered state is a innately divine, if you want to use that word, divine state or... Uh, Mystical state. Extended consciousness. And so uh, to recognize that sexual arousal is a, a deeply mystical experience um, is is important. And I feel like people suffer because they, they're trying to um, believe that there's an artificial divide between their sexual self and their spiritual self. In, um, in it's that belief that in that artificiality that causes distress and rather than just approaching it and accepting that sexuality and sexual arousal is innately sacred state. Of course, provided there's consent, you know, we're, we're not talking about anything, any, anything non-consensual, but uh, if we can really own our sexuality and, and embrace it, I think the likelihood of that non-consensual element creeping in is much, much less. I did want to tell the story of how Patricia and I got together because it, it relates to our designer relationship, uh, which started we pretty started. much from the, out of the, out of the starting date. Um, so I, I, I um, actually has been interested in Tantra for quite some time, especially in my college years. And um, this, it was a little later in life. I saw that someone was getting a lecture on Tantra in Manhattan, and I decided to go. And it turned out to be the first public uh, lecture on Tantra that Mark had given. Um, and I had just returned from a teacher training, um, very kind of a Americanized sexual Tantra, but I'd also done a lot of research on the tradition, and I tried to, you know, give a give a good, clear, and comprehensive explanation of, of my understanding. Uh, and at the end, I, I, in my very kind of typical way, said, you know, anybody wants to email me, here's my email address, and I'm happy to answer questions. So I took him up on that offer, and we started a lively discussion via email. And that eventually turned into a meeting, and um, during which I was a little confused because I didn't know how you learned Tantra. Do you, do you hire someone as a Tantra teacher, or uh, <laughs> what happens? And so I asked Mark if he was going to be my teacher. And I said, uh, there's really nothing I can teach you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which made me a little sad. I was like, darn. Um, well, can we at least be friends with that one? <laughs> and I said, I said, well, why don't we explore this on a sexual level? I was so happy. <laughs> so we, we didn't date. We we went right to some of the tantric practices. We got together, and that's the first thing we did was practice tantra. Um, and um, 
uh, all I can say is that it's very powerful because <laughs> uh, I had no uh, no plans in my life to get married. Um, it was not part of my life trajectory at that time. So or write five books. <laughs> or write five books. So so uh, yeah, it, it's become a our we see our relationship as a spiritual practice. So it, it just is a whole other way of looking at relating. And I think that's what, you know, one of the things that, and we've, we've really moved into more being relationship and sexuality experts, and we're not emphasizing the tantric aspects quite so much anymore for a whole array of reasons that are too complicated to go into right now. But mm -hmm. uh, that's really where our roots are. And in the tradition, the sexual ritual and tantra, the practitioners approach it as an act of worship for one another. And their role within that, in the traditional sexual ritual is for each one to take the other higher. And we feel like that's a great concept to, to take, to borrow from that tradition and to apply to any relationship that you're in any, any partnership that you're in to have that sense of devotion of worship and reverence for one another and to strive to, to bring that into all of your interactions, even the, even the messy and unpleasant ones is, is a great way to approach relating. I love it. Thank you for sharing this story. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, so, so we really, we do see this as, as spiritual and, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, a couple, you know, it, it really is, is whatever configuration, if, if all people involved are bringing that sense of appreciation in, that's, it's a spiritual practice. Mm. I love that. So it talks about how is the illusion that sexuality and spirituality is separate, that uh, being aroused is uh, related to being in an altered state of consciousness and the importance of consent. I like what you're saying, how the act of worship through Tantra um, and taking the other higher um, are all great things explaining how sexuality and spirituality is linked. So that pretty much answers uh, the main theme, uh, big question that I have always on this show. So coming back to um, your book, could you tell us more? There's this thing that you call statement of purpose. Could you elaborate more what that actually means? Yeah, I think um, it's it's there is a how would you say? It? Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm trained as a lawyer, and when you think about a contract, you know, people often talk about a marriage contract or a premarital prenuptial agreement, or they think of relationships, as, or in in the kink world as as you know, a, a different types of contracts, and. In law, contracts are, are documents that are designed to establish benefits and burdens. They're, they're really in an anticipation of, of a lawsuit happening or an attempt to avoid a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And so instead of writing a contract, we really think that creating a mission statement together is, yeah, a, yeah. is a much healthier way of, of approaching it. You know, it's a slight shift, but it's really, let's look at this relationship. What are our hopes for it? What are the potential obstacles that we see to, to getting our hopes fulfilled? How can we avoid those obstacles? What, where are we going with this? And this is something you revisit time and time again, um, and it's a dynamic. I, it doesn't have to be something you write out. It can be just a conversation you guys have occasionally. And some of the things we encourage people to address is, first of all, begin with what you love about your relationship um, right now, as it is, I think borrow too often people go into their desires and their needs and their wants, and they don't really sit and bask in what really is wonderful about their partnership right now. And then talk about your good qualities and the qualities that you want to continue to enhance and move on from there. Um, I don't know if there's any more to mention, but, you know, so we have a whole list of questions that people can use as a uh, leap leaping off point to drafting their statement of purpose. And, and we also encourage people who are interested in opening their relationship or, or being becoming more sexually adventurous to do something similar around, around the, the sexual exploration so that they're, they're having the conversation and it's something that they're mutually 
uh, developing the, the the agenda that they're going to follow, which makes it a lot easier than just saying, well, we're going to agree that we're not going to do this and you're not going to do that and, and all these kind of limits. Those those kinds of agreements and boundaries are important to set. But it's much better to think about, where, you know, what are, what are we aspiring to? Why are we doing this? Mm. Great. I really like um, what you're sharing about this statement of purpose or mission statement. Um, in my work, I like to call it um, being clear about your needs, wants, and desires. And sounds like this uh, um, statement of purpose would be able to cover all of that, it's, uh, including your hopes, your uh, what you love, the qualities that you like to enhance. So this is about a commitment to wanting to learn and grow with each other. And it can be it can be done in any shape or form. And I I think one of the big messages that I'm getting again and again in today's show uh, from the two of you is how it's up to you. It's about giving people permission. It's about encouraging people to discuss and be very aware of what is it that they really want. I think that's very very important. Yeah, and I think another what I would add to that is is that mutuality is very much central to this. So it's not it's not like it's a zero sum, sum game and one person is getting and the other is giving up. So I hope your listeners will visit www.michaelsandjohnson.com to learn more about our work. Yes. So thank you so much for coming on to this show. And this has been Dr. Martha Tara Lee and we've been talking about designer relationships. Thank you so much. Tune in next week for more. <laughs> <laughs>